Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we appreciate you. And we thank you because you have gathered us with a purpose. Of all that we have lifted our voice for, in advance we celebrate the fact that we know you have heard us and that you have answered us. In Jesus' name, we could shout a good shout of amen and clap our hands together for the Lord. Come on, let's appreciate the Lord with a clap of praise. Amen and amen. Please walk over to five people. Tell them, neighbor, a blessing it is to see you today. A blessing it is to see you. A sound man, try and increase my volume, please. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We may have our seats in God's presence. Thank you so much. Douglas, God bless you. Please help me to appreciate Minister Douglas. Let's appreciate the Lord for him. I think we can do better. Let's appreciate the Lord for him. Amen and amen. I honor the Lord for the privilege that he has been able to give me. The entire week has been a blessing. I believe most of you have also been blessed even as we have gone through the word. Amen. And uh, even as we are climaxing, I do believe that God is going to help us uh, to at least finish well. It's an anointing service, so we are going to be praying for you uh, immediately after the word and to believe God that God is going to also help you. Having said that, I also honor God because of the apostle of this house uh, and Bishop Mama for having received me, the youth leadership, and the entire pastorate team of this ministry and the leadership also. Thank you so much. Please clap your hands together and appreciate the leadership of this ministry. Mom is behind there. I had to say hi to her when I saw her when I came in. I said, to me, I think I'm cultured in a way I can never come to a place and then lack to fast. But even, you know, mom told me she's a bit uh, wary because of the very many activities that have taken place. But I said to her, after I've greeted you, I know the anointing will flow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It means I am safe and the grace of God has to multiply. Romans chapter number 8. Very quickly, let's go there. You will forgive me. I wanted to come with a team, but we happen to have a bit of an extension in our service. And since we are a bit far, several things have taken place, so I couldn't really be able to carry the team. They only dropped me here. We had a guest minister. I had to request my wife and the family to go and minister to him. Romans 8 and verses number 2. We will measure on this. And then we will go to Galatians chapter uh, number 5. We will read verse 16, verse 18, and verse 25, and we will continue where we left at on Friday night so that we can be able to uh, build up in the entire context. Uh, if you don't mind, I like us reading together. On Sundays, uh, it's a blessing when people stand and read the Bible. Amen. So do you mind standing? Okay, let's be upstanding. You know, biblically, whenever the Torah was being opened, people stood up to read together. Did you ever know that? Uh, Nehemiah chapter number 8, it's called the respect of the word. And then they confessed it together. Uh, so we are reading verse 2, then we go to Galatians 5, verse 16, verse 18, uh, and verse 25 in unison. Let's go, one, to go. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Galatians chapter number 5. <clears throat> Galatians 5, verse 16, verse 18, verse 25. Let's go. Want to go? This I say then. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. 25. We're still reading together. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. God's word is blessed. You may have your seats in the presence of God. On Friday evening, we began to look at the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life. I was able to indicate to us that one of the things that usually is a major challenge to most believers is the struggle in their walk of faith. Or their struggle, the struggle in their Christianity. Uh, we have to be very honest that Christianity can be a bit burdensome and sometimes a major struggle that would end up making many people consider to backslide. They give a story of Mahatma Gandhi who was one of the major liberators who ever lived that fought for the independence of India and they say concerning Mahatma Gandhi that one day he was reading the Gospels and when he read the Gospels or went to the Gospels he was so impressed 
with the teachings of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the demonstration of power that Jesus was able to display. But one main thing that actually moved him was the philosophy of Jesus, his beliefs, his thought patterns, and his teachings. So they say Mahatma Gandhi wanted to become a Christian at that time. He was almost about to buy being a Christian until he met Christians. When he met Christians for the first time that he interacted with, he changed his mind. And so some people were asking him why he changed his mind from not becoming a Christian. He said, what he was reading is not the same with what he sees. He says he likes Jesus, likes his philosophy, likes his way of thinking, and also the lifestyle that Jesus was able to project. But when he now looked at Christians, he said there was a major disparity. And so he said he changed his mind because he said the Christians are not really living the life Christ had ordained. And what he was simply trying to indicate to us is that a majority of so-called believers are not really truly manifesting the God life that God intended for them to do so. And more majorly, it's because of a lack of understanding, lack of depth in the things of God, and lack of what we consider as encounters that God has actually opened for us to have. And that's one of the key reasons why, as I'm taking us through this journey today, I believe that God is going to help us to come to this clear understanding. Somebody shout, Amen. So when we began to look at Romans 8 and verse 2, we established two factors in Romans 8 and verse number 2. And out of that scripture, when it talks about the law of the spirit of life that has made me free from the law of sin of death. One, we established that this indicates that they are laws that help one live successfully in the spirit. They are laws that help one live successfully in the spirit. Number two, we also established before we come back to number one, which will be what we will major on. Number two, we also established that the law imparts, this law of the, what we consider as a law of the spirit of life, imparts in us what we consider as a divine life. A divine life. A divine life. I was able to ask a question that did Jesus ever heal any of the disciples? He healed none. He had neither healed Thomas, never did he ever heal Peter. He never even had the opportunity to heal Bartholomew or even Judas, who was a thief. So the question was, if that was the case, it means that for the three and a half years, what we consider as the disciples of Jesus, none of them was ever sick as long as they were under the Lord. So the other question that we were able to ask is, what did Jesus give them that was different to give them what they had? Because when we looked at Jesus, healing ministry was part of what he was able to manifest. So I explained to people, for those of you that were there, for those that were not there, at least you have the privilege of me repeating it. I told people that Jesus healed the multitudes, but when it came to the disciples, he never gave them healing. That's what ought to be the life of a believer. A believer should never be healed. We don't talk of healing when we deal with believers. Anytime we talk of believers, we talk of the health, not healing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because what Jesus gave the disciples was health. But what he gave the multitudes was healing. So healing is given to the unbelievers. But health is given to the believers. That's one of the reasons why we come to church oftenly. Every time we are under the teaching of the word, something happens in our DNA. Remember, everything that was created was created by the word of God. Including our human bodies. So I gave you a research. And I told you by research they have proven that people that go to church at least twice per week. Follow me very well and understand why they go, that they rarely fall sick. And if they do fall sick, the likelihood of them getting healed is extremely high. So the answer is very clear. The word that they are receiving basically affects their body and causes their genetics to have ability or what we call immunity at the end of the day. In therapy, there are very many types of therapy. The word therapy uh, in Greek is the word therapia, which basically means to heal uh, or to cure. Uh, if you talk of therapy, you have things like talk therapy, uh, consolidative therapy, but there's another type of therapy they talk about which is considered as preventive therapy. Now, preventive therapy is where things like vaccine appear. Uh, uh, that's where somebody is injected with something that is infused into their system that anytime something that is foreign that is not allowed to be in their system that they were injected to resist tries to come in, what is in them resists that condition. To a believer, we must understand that the moment we receive Jesus within us and every time we feed on the word of God, preventive therapy must become our practicality. So that means sickness can try, but it should not succeed. Please give me a better amen. Disease can try, but it should never be able to succeed against us. Why? Because there's a nature God has invested in us that gives us ability to rise above the condition. 
So let's go back to number one and establish this thing and then we will continue. So we actually looked at this, that God has given us a divine life, but we consider that there are laws that are suggested that should help us live successfully in the spirit. Law number one, which we looked at in Galatians chapter number five and verses number 16 is what we consider as walking in the spirit, walking in the spirit. Now, we actually made an, an agreement on that day that walking in the spirit brings two ideas. Number one, it talks about agreement with the spirit. Agreement with the spirit. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verses number 3, the Bible says that two cannot walk together unless they be in agreement. So, walking in the spirit means that you are in agreement, you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, just keep on writing the scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter number 4 and verses number 9. The Bible says that two are better than one. For their reward is far much more better. So that means when you partner with the Holy Ghost, the quality of rewards you will generate will not be ordinary results or ordinary uh, what we call outcome. So we establish that one thing or one law that we are given is a law of walking in the spirit. Somebody shout walking in the spirit. Every believer has to develop within themselves the ability to agree with the Holy Spirit. He's a partner. The Bible calls him a helper in the book of John chapter number 14. So that means that when the Holy Ghost came into your life, your ability to agree with him gives you a supernatural life. You can no longer live ordinarily. Number two, we also establish the fact that not only does walking in the Spirit mean to agree with the Spirit, but it also means to be activated in the Spirit. Now, activate here speaks about your spirituality being consistent, your disciplines being consistent. So we are talking about you being active in your prayer life. You, you know, let me say this, that if you are the type of person that only fasts in January and that is the end of your fasting, then you are open to warfare. Can I hear an amen? Jesus fasted how many times? All of us, when we read the Bible, we consider he fasted once. Isn't that so? Can I get feedback? Isn't that so? So we always see that Jesus fasted for 40 days and we close a chapter. But let me tell you, Jesus lived a fasted life. So he never really lived just once and never fasted just once. In as much as we see a major fasting for 40 days, if you really look at the Bible, you will discover that he lived a fasted life. The Bible will teach you how he often retreated to the mountain and would spend the whole night in prayer, then appear during the day. It would even tell you how the disciples at particular times would beg him to eat. That tells you that Jesus practically lived a fasted life. Salvation is difficult when you're not activated spiritually. Anytime your priesthood is not active, then your ability to be attacked is consistent. If Ugali is called, Ugali, Sembe, but if it is steaming hot, no fly can they arrest on it. The challenge we have with the generation we are raising is that people, like I said, are epileptic by nature. They are high at one time and low at the other time. Let me explain it to you that you must understand that if you're walking with the spirit, it means your life is constantly active spiritually. By night, you are active. Even when you are sleeping, you are active. Have you ever heard people, mtu akilala, unasikia mtu, anakuamusha, anakuambia, ulu kuwa naongea ukilala. Swali ni ulu kuwa naongea nini? Kuna watu wengine wanaongea matope mbaya sana. Akiyota. So, oh, 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 oh. Usi ni kusi. Oi, oi. Unajua ni kauzi ya likuwa memfuata. But the area uko na ota zile maumbi, but I mean, ndoto zile. By the time somebody is sleeping, as somebody wakes you up and akwambi uko na omba, and you have no idea you are praying. Because in your dream, you are busy activated. Now that's what we want to push you to. That if you will ever walk in the spirit, it means you have to be active in the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is clear that by acti much activity, they are lucky not to be a dream. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse number 3. What you are active in is what you dream about. So if you are more active in the flesh, all your dreams will be carnal. If you are more active in the spirit, all your dreams will be spiritual. Oh, please give me a better amen right here. So then we are actually establishing the fact that walking in the spirit is being activated in the spirit. May God give you strength to be active in the spirit. I said again, may God give you strength to be active in the spirit. 
Number two, we proceeded because I'm targeting something today. And we also looked at Galatians 5 and verse 18. And we established the second law that is, an able, is able to help us to successfully walk with God. Which is being led by the Spirit. So there is walking with the Spirit, partnership. And then there is being led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit means you are submitted to the influences of the Holy Spirit. You are yielded to his influences. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor you are yielded. I know it's Sunday, by evening people are tired, but we will catch up. Tap the other one, tell them for me, neighbor, be yielded. I didn't tell you talk to them, I told you tap them. English, gusa how? Tap them and tell them, neighbor, be yielded. <laughs> tap the third one, I want you to wake up. Tap the other one, tell them, neighbor, neighbor, be yielded. <laughs> so, when we are talking about being led, we are talking about somebody that is yielded. The yielding here submits to the fact that the person is open to development born of the spirit. Galatians chapter number 3 gives us an account. Galatians 3 and verse number 1. It says, as long as the heir is a child, follow me very carefully. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, or rather chapter 4 and verse 1. As long as the heir is a child, he remains to be a slave. Look at that scripture. Now I say that he, that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth not from a servant, though he be lord of all. And the word child there talks of the word nepios in the Greek. The word nepios means an untrained persona and a person who has no sense of discipline. That's what the word child basically means. So the DNA of God is in you. You are born of God. The nature of God is in you. Everything that should help you to live a holy life, to live a victorious life has already been invested in you. The only problem is you are still a nepios, a child. You are still not walking in the disciplines of God. Please, if you hear me say I hear you. So look at verses number two. Let's continue. Then I'll show you something. Then you will be able to understand. But he is under tutors. Look at that scripture. And governors until. Somebody say until. Shout it loudly. Say again until. He says until the appointed time of the father. Now the word tutors and governors. Go to verse number three. Look at this. Let's just read it. Then we will combine it. He says even so we were children when we were in bondage. Under the elements of the world. So who are the tutors? Who are the governors? The elements of the world. What are the elements of the world? Those are the things that affect unbelievers. So what this person is saying is everything that ever affected an unbeliever can affect a believer as long as he is a child. So you will find believers complaining like unbelievers. Hakuna pesa, come unbelievers. Mtu atalalmika seme, sisi wote ni wagonjwa, equal to unbelievers. Kuna homa imegonga, kila mtu pia wewe ukopatu wawana utu ligongwa na iyo homa. Part of the thing is that you are under elements. Now God can allow problems to grow you. But God never really wanted problems to, the, to be the foundation of your growth. He wanted his spirit to be the foundation of your growth. Please give me a better amen. No, give me a more louder amen. amen. So now let's go to Galatians chapter number 4 and verse 19. Galatians 4 and verse number 19. Then I want you to look at this scripture so that we can now be able to build it up. Now Paul is making a prayer. Please stay with me. Listen to what he says. Let's read it together. One, two, go. My? Uh-huh. Yes. Until what? Have you ever read that scripture? It says Christ be formed. Now let me ask you. We receive Christ. We don't need him to be formed. But Paul is trying to tell us that receiving Christ is not enough. The formation of Christ is necessary. So that means we all have a measure of Christ in us. Are we all in agreement? If you hear me, wave your hands and say, I hear you. We all have a measure of Christ in us, but there can be formation. There can be development of Christ in every person. Please give me a better amen. There can be growth. That's why in Ephesians chapter number 4, when Paul is speaking, he says that we have come to the fullness of stature. So that means Christ needs formation. Christ needs development in each one of us. Now the only way that that can come is when we yield to the Spirit. When we now make a decision to submit to the influences of the Holy Ghost, that is when now we become sons of God. Please, I thought I had an amen. And so he says, if you are led, Galatians chapter 5, go back there. If you are led of the Spirit, 5 verse 18. If you are led of the Spirit, you are therefore no longer under the law. The law does not rule over you. Please tap your neighbor, shout, and tell your neighbor, shout a good amen right there. <laughs> so the things that affect others should not affect you. Because now you are led of the Spirit. Now you are operating like a son. Let me hear a better amen right here. 
You are no longer a child. You are not a nepios. You have developed disciplines on the inside of you because you have the yielding of God. A victorious life is not just a life that is leading you. A young man decided one day when he woke up so desperate to hear God, he picked up his Bible. He said, Lord, as I drop my Bible, wherever it will open and my eyes will land, that is where I will know you're speaking to me. Foolish young man. As the Bible dropped like this and the pages were open, his eyes landed in the scripture that says, and Judas hanged himself. I don't want to tell you what happened next, but those are nepios, stupid children in church. Another young man attended church quite early. His prayer was, Lord, today I need a wife and you must answer. So my prayer is very simple. The lady that will come and sit on this chair, a chair that was on the side, on the first one, put in on blue, that will be my wife. The brother was the first one in charge. He was one of the intercessors that began to pray. He prayed so early. Service was starting at 8. He was there at 6. As he labored in prayer by 8, people began to come into church. As people were walking into church, he noticed an old mama also walking in. The old mama was put in on blue and she looked like she was targeting that chair. The brother did not care because he knew that one is not the will of God already. But as he kept on praying, he discovered the woman was coming. <laughs> The brother shouted in the name of Jesus. As he was rebuking in Jesus' name, the old woman kept on coming. In the name of Jesus, the old woman kept on coming. Then all of a sudden, the old woman sat on the chair that the brother had asked the Lord to confirm. The brother fainted in the sight of everyone. People thought it was a holy ghost. No, it was a horror ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not a trial and error person. If you walk with God, you walk with God with precision. God hears prayer. God answers prayer. Your God is not dumb. He talks. And if you're willing to hear him, he will speak to you. But the thing that you have to understand is that you have to make a choice to come out of being a nepios. There must be a decision I will grow into becoming a son. And the only way that you can be able to do so is that you are yielded to the influences of the Holy Ghost. His influence over you is stronger than the influences of your flesh. At least I'm getting some better amens. The others are becoming more better suspects. Let me hear more louder amen right here. <laughs> the more he influences you, the more you will discover your life becomes victorious. The more he leads you, the more you will discover your life is rising to a better extraordinary affair. You don't need to work hard to be a millionaire. You need to be led of the spirit. You don't need to work hard to live a holy life. You need to be led of the spirit. I thought I had an amen right here. A man that wrote the book on the prayer of Jabez, I've forgotten his name. He explains about the last part of the prayer of Jabez of how God should deliver us from evil. Then he combines it with the prayer that Jesus prayed. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so he goes ahead to explain how he prayed that prayer oftenly and how it worked for him one day after he came from a preaching engagement in one other state and was flying back to his state. He said as he boarded the plane, he sat in, in, in an economic class where there were three chairs. So he was in between two people. The man on the left side had a pornographic magazine. The one on the right side had another magazine with women with bikinis. Bikinis are the dresses that people put on for swimming. But they are more serious. It's not just the one that is full for swimming. It's actually the panty and the top. The brother said to himself he was so tired that day. He knew he had no ability to resist. To see those pictures and to start imagining the imaginations. He sank in his chair and told God, remember the prayer I prayed. I ask you not to lead me to temptation and God all of a sudden touched the guy on the left side he closed the magazine two minutes after the guy on the right side began to yawn and he fell into sleep the brother sat up and said Lord thank you for hearing my prayer lest I would have fallen into temptation the leading of the spirit is what helps you to overcome sin wherever it is please I need a better amen Psalms 119 and verse 139. Either 139 or 133. You can confirm it for me. David makes a prayer in the King James translation or even New King James. Uh, check out 133. Somewhere around there, 133, 134. He says, lead me or order my steps rather. Order my steps. Yes, verse number 133. He says, order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. In other words, Lord, lead me and iniquity will not hold me. So if God leads you, the enemy has no hand on you. Please, I need a better amen. If God leads you, the enemy cannot understand you. Your life becomes a mystery. Your life becomes something that Satan has no ability to understand. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you can be a mystery to the world. They ask you how you succeeded. I was led of the spirit. How you broke through. I was led in the spirit. How you overcame that temptation. I was led in the spirit. I thought I had an amen right here. How you became who you are. I was led by the spirit. You can allow the Holy Ghost to become the main influencer of your life. Let him influence your thoughts. Let him influence your dreams. Let him influence your decisions. Come on, give me an amen right here. Let him influence everything that you will be able to do. And my friend, you will be on another level very few people can be able to be. A young man sat down in a managerial meeting. It was a meeting where all the managers were seated together with the CEO. They were about to invest $4 million. Uh, $4 billion and partner together with another company. As they all sat down, they had done the search, confirmed the other company, and so they were ready to go ahead and sign the agreement and pass it to the other company and start off. So the boss had called all the managers. As he now asked them, are we all in consent? They all shouted yes, apart from the young man who lifted his hand. And he begged to stand up and they permitted him. As he rose up, he said, I will speak what you may not agree with, but I, bear, I beg that you bear with me. And so they listened to him. He said, I ask us, please, four billion is not small money. Can we just add two more weeks to do a search because I'm not comfortable with the other, part, uh, other, uh, other company we're about to partner with. All of them shouted at him because they looked at him and wondered, why do you raise up such a matter? And yet we have done all the search. The CEO is an intelligent man. He shut them all down. He said, four billion is not small money. Two weeks is not a long while again. Let's just take two more weeks. And after that, we can continue. But though we are sure, we have done our search. It did not take two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. It took three days. And the, the CEO called for a board meeting again. Sat all the managers down. And he looked at them. And he said, we have done a search. It hasn't taken two weeks. But for the three days we have done, we have discovered the other company was a fake company. We would have actually been losing the money. And so they turned to the young man and asked him, what is your secret? How did you get the information? And the young man gave an answer. He said, I know. No, even before that, he said, can I, can I stand up? They said, yes. The young man stood up. He said, can I freely talk? They said, yes. He said, number one, I am born again. <laughs> number two, ever since I came to this company, I always arrive early and I do prayer for this company. Number three, God speaks to me about all that concerns this company. Number four concerning this deal God told me that that company was a fake company and we would lose everything ever since that day whenever they called for a meeting and were about to make a major decision they turned to him and asked him what is your God saying when he leads you you will be delivered from evil Oh, I thought I had an amen right here. When he leads you, your life will be extraordinary. You will invest where people do not know where to invest. You will pull your money from areas others will lose. And you will make money more where others are losing money. May you receive the leading of the Holy Ghost. We had a particular young guy. You know, years ago, we lost money in Desi. We learned our lesson. And so some of us began to really pray. And we decided we have to be hearing God. And so one other company called, came up called Good Life, which looked better, like a circle. A couple of uh, a couple I have in the church decided to invest their money. That time I really prayed up. I looked at them and I told them, do it only for one year and immediately after one year withdraw the money. That couple made almost a million plus as profit from investing in good life. By the time they just pulled it, the next month is when good life went under. God can lead you in places others have never been. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God can lead you into a place of success. So the leading of the spirit is where he influences you. Not all men that look good are husbands. Not all women that dress well are potential wives. God can save you from ninjas. <laughs> Let me preach. I feel like preaching right here. God can deliver you from strange men. That you may look at them and they may convince you they are okay. But God sees what you do not see. And something on the inside of you will be telling you, mm, not this one. Every time you feel it, your head is telling you he's the one. Your spirit is telling you, move away. It is God saving you from evil. And God can lead you to a person who everyone will reject. But he that sees the future 
future is the one that determines your victory ladies and gentlemen let the holy ghost lead you i pray for you to receive the leading of the holy ghost be led in your academics be led in your business be led in your investments be led in your social life i thought i had an amen right here be led in your spiritual life and you will become an overcomer over every temptation of the devil where others are falling you will not fall where others are going under you will not go under because he that leads can see all he that leads knows all he that leads guides you well he that leads will take you to a place of victory i release an atmosphere in this house today that the holy ghost will take over somebody's life you will be under the influence of the holy ghost you will be led of the spirit led to the right person led to the right investment led to the right marriage led to the right place if you believe it shout aloud hallelujah right here slap three people and tell your neighbor neighbor you will be led you will be led come on slap them with a high five if they don't like you go to the one that likes you tell them neighbor receive the leading of the holy ghost we are praying for a generation that will be under the influence under the government of the holy ghost they consult before they do it they inquire before they make a choice the success of david was a wisdom of inquiry at the time david lost his wives lost his property and lost people under him when everyone wondered what would happen in fact the bible says they were angry at david and collected stones and were ready to knock the fellow down the bible says david encouraged himself in the lord but he never stopped there he called for the urim and called for the thummim he requested that they bring it before him and he inquired of god shall i pursue will i recover and god answered him pursue for you shall recover all i am believing god by the time this conference is coming to an end god will begin to lead you i thought i had an amen right here he will lead you out of an evil decision into a right decision he will lead you out of a place of chaos into a place of success he will lead you to a place of uncommon victory no longer shall you be under the influence of darkness you will be under the influence of the holy ghost shout yes shout yes shout yes take your seats for a while so we need the government of the holy ghost and jesus says in matthew chapter 6 and verse number 10 thy kingdom come matthew 6 and verse 10 thy government come and thy will come on talk to me which is in heaven be done on earth so the will of god happens where the government of god is in charge where God's government is, is where the will of God can take place. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? You need to be led by the Holy Ghost. You must love the Holy Ghost. So let's go to number three law. The law number three is living in the spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 25. This is where I want to hammer them, we pray. Oh, that devil will leave you today. You are coming out victorious. I said again, you are coming out victorious. Living in the spirit means that you are planted in the atmosphere of the spirit. You are planted in the atmosphere of the spirit. That's what living in the spirit means. Now, if you are planted, it doesn't just mean that forcefully you are. Because God can never force you to be with him. God loves himself so much that he can't force himself on you. Only demons are lawless that they can invade your space. But God himself has to be invited. The amens are few. <laughs> are we still here? <laughs> God himself has to be invited. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. When we are talking about living in the spirit, it means literally you're planted. That means you are a lover of the atmosphere of God. The same way your human nature requires oxygen to live. You must know your true nature is not this. You invest too much time on this and this is not really who you are. Who you are is inside. <laughs> if that one lives, this one dies. So your greatest investment is on the inside. So the same way this requires oxygen to live is the same way the inside man requires God's presence to live. The oxygen of your spirit man is the presence of God. When God created the plants, he spoke to the earth. Come on, somebody talk to me. When he created the beast, he spoke to the earth. Pluck out this from the ground, it will die. When he created fish, he spoke to the water. Pull it out of water, it will die. Because its source of life, any marine creature, is the water. 
its source of life, any plant or tree is a ground. But when God wanted to create man, he said, let us, he spoke to himself. Hey, I feel like shouting. Are you guys hearing what I'm trying to say? Uh -uh. Are you hearing me? God sat down and had a board meeting with himself and he said, let us make man. He spoke to himself. So if man is disconnected from God, man is dead. In fact, I say, living without God is existence. Life only begins when you get born again. I'll repeat what I said. Living without God is existence. But when you get born again, that's when life actually begins. Please, I need a better amen right here. <laughs> Are you still hearing what I'm trying to say? I know you're writing notes, but I want to push something because I feel miracles will open right here. I want you to understand that God's context is this. He wants you to have a value for him. A value for his atmosphere more than anything. I want to show you a scripture that will intrigue you. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 19. And I want you to look at it from verse number 16. And see how a young man had to understand the power of atmospheres. 1 Samuel 19. And we will begin to see. Uh, go down. You can go down. Verse number 18. Look at verse number 18. And then you will see what I'm saying. Now this is David. Saul is in the process of pursuing him. And he wants to finish him. Now this is what the Bible says as we continue. It says, so David fled and escaped to Samuel to a place that is called Ramah. And he told him all that Saul had done to him. And Samuel went, I mean, and he and Samuel went to another place called Naioth. Naioth meant exalted. Now, let's go to the next verse. He says, and it was told who? Please, we are in it. It was told who? Saying, behold, David is where? In Naioth, in Ramah. Continue the next verse. And Saul did what? Uh -huh. To take who? So he organized, let them go and deal with the man. But watch what it says. It says, and when they saw the company of the prophets, so the men that are coming there, prophesying, and Samuel standing in the midst of them, over them, the Spirit of God did what? Came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also began to do what? The ones that were sent to arrest him were arrested. Let's read the next verse, because God wants to change your atmosphere today. Even when we were praying for favor, when our brother was, uh, favor is smellful. It is a scent. We can smell favor. Favor can be seen and favor can be smelled. <laughs> it's an aura. It's an atmosphere that is on people. The amens are the ones that are receiving. <laughs> it says that when Saul, it was told Saul, he sent others like demons that constantly look for you and never give up. He sent others and they also prophesied likewise. And the Bible says, and Saul sent messengers again at that time. And they also prophesied also. They are atmospheres that overpower forces of darkness. If you are planted in those atmospheres, the forces cannot touch your destiny. <laughs> Look at the verse that will follow after that. Are we continuing? And went he also. Okay, where is Saul now? I think we have gone a bit faster. Go to verse number 21 again. Go back to verse 21. And when it was told Saul, he sent others. And now the third time, okay, verse 22. Uh, let's continue. And then went he also. So the king of demons, so to say. Saul is the demonic king. Are you understanding me? He decided, I will carry myself. That strong person decided, me, I will deal with the matter. They say, if you cannot, I mean, if people cannot help you solve the matter, then be the one to finish it up. So he said, I will deal with it. The Bible says, and he also went to Ramah and came to a great well uh, that is in situ. And he asked and, 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 and said, where are Samuel and David? And one said, behold, they are Nioth in Ramah. Let's continue. Look at what he says. And he went thither to Nioth and Ramah. And what happened? The spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on. He hasn't even arrived. Wale wengine at least walifika. Saulo yake aligongwanga tao kabla jafika payo. Hiyo mtashika kesho. Hiyo understand me? Aligongwa tao na hapa kwa bridge kabla jafika alianza kushughulikiwa. The Bible says and what happened? He began to prophesy until he came to Nioth in Ramah. Now look at the next verse after that. And what happened to him? He stripped off his clothes also and prophesied. In other words, God put him to shame. Wale wengine hawakutoanguo lakini huyu Mungu alisema huyo ndio ule nilitafuta wacha ni mufanyishe embarrassment mpaka hata wai rudi hapa tena ladies and gentlemen you must be a lover of atmospheres of god living in the spirit means that you are planted in the atmosphere of the spirit the holy ghost works in atmospheres that's why worship is powerful that's why praise is 
powerful. That's why praying in tongues is powerful. I thought I had an amen right here. That's why holiness is powerful. That's why fellowship where two or three are gathered in my name. There will I be. And where the Lord is. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The spirit of the Lord is. And where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. I thought I had an amen right here. Fellowship is powerful. Malachi chapter 3. Just open this scripture. Oh I feel something here. I want to raise a generation that can become lovers of the atmosphere. You will love God. You will love his presence. I thought I had an amen right here. In the morning you will love him. In the afternoon you will love him. During the day you will love him. Even when you are washing clothes you are loving him. When you are cooking you are loving him. When you are watching something else you are still loving the atmosphere of his presence. What it says now I've given you a scripture. Which one did I give you? Malachi 3 and verse 16. Look at the power of fellowship. The power of it. That's why Atta kama umetenda dhambi. Usi wai toroka church. Iyo ndo shetani nataka. Ati waki kuona. Uta kumbuka dhambi zako. That uki wai anguka. Unaunaka vile mtoto. Aki chapu wana mbuyu ama madhe. Hau toroka angi. Nato ki toroka. Unarudimbiwa na kushika migu yake. If you fall. Remember. You have an advocate. Run back to God. Let no one ever chase you away. Because you messed up. I thought I had an email right here. He says, then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. Hey, I feel like shouting right there. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, how often do you speak one to, about God to me? Muliza, how often? How often? <laughs> Are you hearing me? And then he says, one to another. And the Lord did what? Just when they were fellowshipping, Mungu alisikia. Mungu wakusikia kusabawa likuwa naomba waki fellowship. Heard, and he says hark and hard and a book of what? Remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. A book was opened called the book of remembrance. Not only do we have fellowship and God records the time we are here. He doesn't just record it for recording. Every record means you deposited and you invested something. So from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's been a book opened in this fellowship. By the time we are coming here, the book is still open. It means God will remember everything. And the time of reward when it will come, God will deliver. God does not owe anyone anything. He gives everything that he had ever promised. I thought I had an amen right here. The books were open while they were busy fellowshipping. That's why you can't miss cell meetings. I thought I had an amen. You can't miss the father's meeting, the men's meeting, the whatever meeting it is. Be a lover of atmospheres. Matatus that play music attract people the most. Research has even proven that businesses that play, play Christian music make more profit in a day more than any other business. Because of atmospheres. 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 <laughs> I said atmospheres. Did you ever know that you don't need to be prayed for for certain things if you're planted in the right place? They are yokes that break. When a young man attended church, the pastor that day told everyone, and a certain young lady, these are true testimony, the pastor told everyone, give God a shout, for God will do all on the behalf of his people. And answer. The young boy remembered Second Chronicles 2020. The boy was broke badly. He decided to remember that scripture says, believe in God, you will be established. In his prophets, you will prosper. The guy decided, I believe in what this man has said. And I will celebrate God because I believe in him. As he began to clap with zest, shouting and jumping, money began to drop from his hands. Coins. I know you will tell me, Pastor, where did that come from? But let me tell you something. If water can come from a rock, money can come from hands. That was a sign God showed him supernaturally that poverty was broken. After he left, the guy went into a tender that changed his life.
permanently. In the same meeting was a 35 year old girl who no brother had ever greeted or given a long handshake or a smile to suggest we are together. Nothing like that. The lady was growing old. She was doing well in career, but no brother was coming. She released herself from the same scripture. As she clapped and jumped up and down, she never knew God was sorting her out. Immediately after the service, a brother walked to her and told her, Sister, when I saw you jumping, pondon, pondon, that means up and down, my heart also went pondon, pondon. And I heard the Lord telling me that you are my wife. My wife. That is how God made her visible. That's why Kikujanga Church, now when you mutu wakunya maza urgifungia. Labda ukipiga makelele ndo ndugu kama baraka atakuona because vile yana penda makelele anataka dada wa makelele hataki kukuta listen naambia anga watu kama we ni brother kama barak wewe ni vibrator unatafuta dada vibrator hautaki dada amenyamaza kama pasi tu umekataa no <laughs> tell your neighbor atmospheres can give you miracles yes there are addictions that you can break when you are here. That as we are talking like this, your tama in a kufa as we are talking. Because as we are worshipping, God anakushukia and anakufanyia kazi. A woman attended a meeting with her husband as Bishop was preaching. That is Bishop Doug Howard Mills, the Ghanaian bishop. As he was preaching, he noticed that the woman touched the husband. And the husband stood up like a goalkeeper. And every time Bishop would be preaching and shouting, You're blessed, the guy's like a goalkeeper. Say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The woman kept on touching other people and telling them. And all of a sudden, the service became very crazy. As the service became very crazy, bam, miracles were happening. So Bishop made a decision I have to talk to this woman and ask her, What was she telling the husband and people that the service became like this? Then the woman was telling Bishop the story. He said, Man, of God as you preached God opened my eyes I saw behind you a big angel and if you read the Bible it says right to the angel of the church so even this church has an angel standing here right now he said I saw a big angel and not just that I saw that anyone that received your word the big angel commanded other angels which were amongst us Hebrews chapter 12 verse number 20 says we have come to Mount Zion I thought I had an amen right here to the company of innumerable angels so even right here there are angels just packed up he said i saw the big angel commanding the small ones anyone that was receiving the word the big one commanded that one give him the miracle give her the miracle give her the miracle that is why you saw people becoming crazy that's why i refuse to be quiet when i go to church because when i say amen angels are delivering my miracle hey right here there can be healing right here there can be deliverance right here doors can open right here money can come your way right here yokes can be destroyed right here weakness can be turned to strength right here people can come out of struggles into an impartation of holiness somebody shout amen shout another amen shout a more resounding amen can you give the lord a clap and make some noise right here Come on, make some noise. Leave your neighbor alone. Come here, you go sour. Where Shangilia? Yeah, yeah, love that I go poor. Where we wanna do? We wanna fit on a tata. Give the Lord a shout. Atmospheres matter. Atmospheres also determine encounters, and it is encounters that release men. Encounters is what makes salvation exciting. Take your seats for a while. Encounters is what makes you passionate. Encounters is what gives you zeal for prayer. A pastor began to say that he used to struggle receiving revelation. And he struggled in prayer while he was young, not yet a pastor. And then he discovered that every time he went to church, he was always distracted. Anaka church, anapenda kuangalia watu, kausingizi kanatokea, ni meno anauma. Are you understanding? Makucha anauma. Are you still with me? Then he discovered he never focused on the pastor when the pastor was preaching. So one day he made up his mind. This is a friend of mine. He's called Bishop Edward in a place called Gashie. He's the chairman of the pastors. He said he made up his mind. And when the pastor stood up to speak, he said he sat down looking at the pastor intently and did not move. He said he never knew when the service ended. He found himself on the floor Two hours had already passed and the service had closed and he was speaking in tongues. 
As he woke up, he said, that was a day, the impartation for the word increased in his life. He said, that was a day he discovered that he began to get prophetic directions from God. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why do teachers tell you to sit in a certain way? Why do they tell you to look at a certain way? Why do they tell you to write? It's called focus. Are you, are you still hearing what I'm trying to say? They're trying to tell you you can draw something whenever you're focusing away. I every day look at somebody like Pastor Chris or Akilome and the miracles that happen in his ministry, they are intriguing. But believe me, not all miracles are based on the fact that it is a gift of a man. Look at his congregation when he begins to speak. Look at how they sit. Look at how intent they are. That by the time the guy says miracles are happening here, they are already taking it. It's only Kenyans that just sit like people who are in a lecture room <laughs> with a lecturer who's writing to them, writing nugget 2.3 and key 4. <laughs> no wonder you only go out with keys and the same devil you walked in. But there's an atmosphere you come in with. Chaba, are you hearing me? Please allow me to preach. It's the last day, so don't hold me down. There's an atmosphere. You walk in and all of a sudden, what we consider as a spirit of heaviness is lifted off. And a garment of praise is released on you. I tell people that the secret behind it, come here very quickly, Alan. Barak, it's okay. Alan, stand behind him. The secret behind it is that as we are here, there are always some people standing behind us. We call them angels. Sometimes you feel very tired. Those angels, as you are tired in the service, touch your shoulder and all of a sudden you feel a heat running through your hands. When the worship is going on or when the word is going on, all of a sudden an energy comes on you. A blanket is lifted. Those angels are ministering angels. They are working is to ensure that you get maximum what God had intended. Those angels ensure that you get the harvest of result you have. As we are talking, they are seated and standing behind you. They are next to you. I, I thought, I, please, I'm trying to bring you to the reality of the scripture. I, I don't know, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to bring you to the reality of the scripture that God knows you must receive maximum. God never orchestrates a meeting and allows you to live the same way but there must be a secret the secret is you must have understanding of the atmosphere and you must be addicted to the atmosphere and you must be a lover of the atmosphere david knew it that is why david would say one thing have i desired this shall i seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and inquire in his temple as i behold his beauty he was a radical lover of god radical he loved the presence in the old testament there are people that lived the new testament reality i will break it down can i keep on breaking it down there are people in the old testament who are full of the holy ghost that means the holy ghost lived in them in the old testament the holy ghost only came upon people but there are few men in the old testament that the holy ghost lived in one was david he says take not away your spirit from me that means he lived in him and never just came upon him. Oh no, you need to give me a better amen right here. No, I need a better amen right here. There are men in the Old Testament that lived in the New Testament reality. You know, if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 6, it talks of the powers of the age to come. So that means at this stage of your life, you can touch things a hundred years from now that people will be touching. That's what people like what we call Enoch touched. He can't touch rapture before rapture will ever come. Oh, I thought I had an amen right here. That's what people like Elijah enjoyed. He enjoyed the same like what Enoch enjoyed before rapture will ever appear. Ladies and gentlemen, you have an added advantage when you're planted in God. I want to challenge you to love him. Love him. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, love him. Look at the other one for me, tell your neighbor, love his presence. Uh -uh, that one is not loving enough. Turn to a third one again and tell them, neighbor, love the atmosphere of God. Be allowing yourself by the time you are sleeping play worship don't just sleep play it as long as no one can interfere you with your bedroom play it saturate the room with his presence you will find out that you are waking up in the morning extremely fresh even if you slept late you have an energy that is unusual two hours of sleep but you wake up like somebody who did eight hours it's an energy imparted in you please can i hear an amen right here Oh, come on, let me hear a better amen right here. Play it at all times. You will begin to see God giving you ideas when you are stuck. When you don't know what to do, God all of a sudden will begin to give you ideas. Do this. We lost about 1 million, 1.3 million and 50 when I did some car business. 
I convinced one or two people. We started investing. A friend of mine that used to be a former schoolmate is the one you can have your seat. Is the one that came in and he came in with his wife. And so when he came in with his wife, I was even convinced this one can never lie. And this cup is I used to do importation. I still do it, but a little here, a little there. And so we went ahead. And we did it. Where he messed it is even when he told me that we need to sign an agreement with the lawyer. I said, ah, this one is a genuine guy. So we went, at, but within me, something is telling me, eh, hey, pancreas, don't go in that direction. I would override it. He used to be a former schoolmate and everything. I override. I did everything to override it. When the time of delivery came, car number one filled. All of a sudden, now we discovered we were duped. And that's when I knew that husbands and wives can collude to con. They are, they are con men who are not just men. They are con couples. <laughs> are you hearing me? In Nairobi, they are very nasty. And so we began, that's the reality. I was even doing a 21-day fast when all of a sudden I discovered, I was on the 10th day, I broke the fast. I, I said, Jehovah, how can I lose when I am seeking you? <laughs> I was discouraged. I said, today, Lord, I am not going to, I will eat because how can I lose money? <laughs> I decided to go back to prayer the next day and I cried to God. I said, Lord, please find a way. We tried looking for the guy. We even engaged police and one day God appeared to me. He told me, forgive. If you won't let it go, I won't show you my power to recover. I said, Lord, but there are scriptures. Touch not the anointed. He has touched a life wire. He must die. <laughs> I picked up scriptures. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? I said, maybe his day of judgment has come. I did every, you know, there is a time here when I engage police, like in Kunazile, when I to panga kama ninja wa kiroho. 12 midnight judgment prayers. Lord, I pray over his head. He will not rise again. <laughs> and the brother never died. In fact, he was doing well. <laughs> Until when God told me forgive. And that's when I, then God now began to teach me. It was in the month of April. No, August. Huh? Yes, August. 2014, 2015. All of a sudden in the coming month, God began to throw waves of recovery at every instruction you would give me. I would hear him. You would tell me, do this. I would do it. 400,000 would come in. Do this. I would do it. Something else would come in. Remember one of the deal I was able to do. I, pastor called me, very close friend of mine, Pastor November. He told me there's a car that is supposed to be coming. It's stuck at the port. We need money. I asked him how much. And God just let me call so and so. I called the person and I told him we need this amount of money, close to half a million. The guy didn't argue. He just said, Give me your account details. He doesn't even live in Eldor. It. How he trusted me is called the Holy Ghost. Sent the money just two hours after that. 400,000, you don't send it in a hurry. Even 40 people pray. Are you understanding me? But for somebody to send it, it must be some God craft, not witchcraft, God craft, that manipulation of God that happened there. The guy liked what I did. So by the time when we Mombasa, we were supposed to be coming back again. He calls me, tells me, Pancras, a friend of mine is looking for a certain type of car and uh, his budget is 3.5. In my heart, I knew it was him. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? So now he decides to open up. He says, this is a budget and everything. God leads me. Go to this site. Go ahead and do this. By the time I go to the site and I get everything, ladies and gentlemen, he said his budget was how much? 3.5. I made my clean 600,000. No sweat, no ahala. Are you understanding me? Uh, and I enjoyed it. What I'm simply trying to say, he will lead you and you can recover all. A pastor looked at his congregation 90% were young people. Financially, they were all struggling because amongst the 90%, over 50 were students. And God told him, teach entrepreneurship. Pastor Sam he began to teach them on business. As he taught them, he was asking God, where will this take? And he told him, you obey me, teach. As he taught, one of the teachings he taught was Ideas Rule the World. He's even wrote a book called Ideas Rule the World. As he taught that young men were receiving it right in the vision. One of the young men received or conceived an idea that required 5 billion naira. 5 billion, as per those years, was 2.5 billion Kenyan shillings. That's about 250 million dollars. Are, are you still here? If you're here, shout a good amen. All right. So the guy had actually received. So after doing a series of teaching, in one of the days, God told him, now teach on favor and how it will bring contacts into your life. Pastor Sam began to teach it. In the process, the spirit of prophecy landed on him. He began to prophesy. As he was prophesying like this, God began to open the idea to this young man. He showed him five people he needs to contact. 
and asked from each one of them one billion naira. The boy was boiling in the service. He waited for the grace to be made. After everything was said and done, after the grace, he ran out quickly, made the first phone call. The person asked him, give me your account number. Sent one billion. Call the second one, one billion. Call the third one, one billion. Fourth, fifth, five billion was sent within a span of 24 hours. Sam Adiemi says that that is one of the billionaires he has in his church today. That when he coughs and makes a request to do a project, those are some of the people that are not us. They come and visit him in the office to clear the project before giving day appears. Millionaires are here if they understand the power of atmospheres. The Holy Ghost is not just for you to pray. Oh, Nikuba, Nikuba, Nikuba. Ah, ah. <laughs> There is an added advantage in him. He will teach you how to make profit. Oh, your amen is now getting saved. <laughs> there is an added advantage in him. He will open your mind to realities few people have had. I pray that there will be an atmosphere that will come here. I know you are tired from morning, but I believe that God is about to shift an atmosphere right here. Whatever followed you that has been working against you, we will cut it off right now. God will cause it to die. Whatever has been working, even in the place you are living, when you will live here, you will come out with a different atmosphere. And you will carry that atmosphere wherever you are going. 1997, we went for a mission to a particular place that was known in, in Meru. It's called Kateri. And when we used to do missions, we used to do them in a very strange way. How we did missions is that we would knock at the door. And when knocking at the door, we would begin to witness to somebody. And so we would come to your place, bet. And also we will come. And by the time, now you don't know us, we would begin to talk to you. We have come, we will be sent two by two. And we want to uh, uh, witness to you. So all of a sudden, people block you quickly by where they, they go to church. Guy began to say, Mini meokoka, nivi naivi naivi. And this is how we used to witness. So by the time it's done, Holy Ghost, your name is Bet. You have a condition in your body. By the time you just say that, they say, please, karibu, karibu. <laughs> they receive you. That's how we did witnessing. So we were so full of the Holy Ghost. One day, while we were in prayer, our director said the Holy Ghost is releasing a burning sensation that is so strong that some of you are feeling it in your belly. It was during morning glory. And indeed, tunukwa tunaskia tunaungua. And life, unaskia unaungua kwa tumbo. Sasa yo prophecy ya kuachia, po prophecy kaendelea, if you don't release it, ita kuchoma. Wee! Tulikuwa vijana, so hapo ni kuzuri kisha zikia vitu kama hiyo. So Sunday mefika tunatumwa two by two kwa different churches, Methodist churches. So mimi tulikuwa na brother moja hapo nimesau jina yake. We went to a particular place. I was to be the key speaker. He was only to give a testimony. As we arrived like this, the pastor saw us, looked at us from head to toe. Akaona hawa kuna kitu wameleta. So immediately changed. There was a particular lady alikuwa memweka hapo. Aeze kubiri kama mubiri ya jafika. So alimpatia responsibility. But akafanya mistake mzuri. Akasema kabla mubiri very nice mistake so mimi no nikasimama nilipo simama nikasema kabla sijaongea wacha mwenzangu wakuje atuwa ushuda akatoa mimi lipo simama nikasoma proverbs na nikasema asubu ya leo tuliombewa na tukambio kuna moto tumepokea tusipo yachilia itatuchoma so sitaki kutoka hapa bila kuyachilia kwa sababu sina haja ya kuyendelea kuchomeka I told everyone kwa dakatano tafadhali ni msimame hunchbacks zilipotea unajua hunchbacks zilikufa hapo arthritis ilikauka pastor haku amejazwa na roo mtakatifu alijazwa kaungea na ndimi. 1998 tulipo rudi mchungaji alisema wale vijana walikuja. Wacha warudi yapa. Iyo joto nilikuwa nayo haikuisha. Nilishanga imekata. Tuliabiwa itaisha. Haikuisha. I went back to Nairobi. My twin brother haku amejazwa. Hata kama endwa ni niombea ni rege mungo. Nika mwita ni kamambia John kuja. Kuna kitu tulipatiwa bado inanichoma. Nina ataka ni kupatie. Na iyo ndo leo nina ataka kuambia. Kuna kitu itawachoma bada ya ibada. And after you will live here, you will carry the same fire. Hey! I thought I had an amen right here. You will carry the same anointing back to your house. Mama na baba watasikia yo weko. Mandugu zako wataisi. Kama uko hapa na wedi kijana uko high school utakapoenda lesbianism itakufa. Homosexuality itakufa. Kwa sababu yo atmosphere itakuwa pamoja na wewe. If you believe it, shout I receive it. Shout louder, shout I receive it. 
we want to impart in you something that will stay permanent radically don't ever think that we just shout for nothing something burns in us that's why we are shouting that's why we are shouting as a dean of students in the year 2000 class 2000 i teach on different topics i'm a lecturer also so one of the topics i teach on is ministry gifts and in ministry gifts i'll teach on things like gifts of the spirit and i'll teach on how somebody can walk with word of knowledge and stuff like that my wife boarded a bus and when she bought it, she was a student. Amen. Class 2000. It's good to marry your student. And so, when she boarded the bus like this, as she was, as she was going to KBS, as she was going to KBS, as she was going to KBS, she brushed it off. So, she was going to KBS, she was going to KBS, she was going to KBS, she was going to Uyu, amechukua ni Holy Ghost hayo namwambia. All of a sudden boldness ikamwingia akakuja akamwambia, "Jama, uko na nini yangu?" Akakataa. Hiyo boldness ipomingi aliposhika koti, kibeti ilianguka. Mzee alinyamaza hapo, hakuongea, alitembea na akaenda. Msichana huyo akachukua kibeti yake na akaenda. Holy Ghost anaweza kuonesha pali kurikava vitu zako. Please I need a better amen. Nikabeba wanafunzi wangu tukaenda pali panaitwa Kirigiti, Kiambu. Tulienda mission Kirigiti in Kiambu We were doing a meeting for reading gospel A particular pastor And while we were doing it at that particular time Class 2000 I was taking my students for fast for 7 days Mini napenanga radicality Hii mambo ya kuinua watu wanapenda makurios na makurios Kutoka januari mutakufa Tabia mbaya Mwezi tukwa kila maragidheri, modokoi, apana, ishindwe Nyama, ninaomba yoroi, kufe katika jina laisu Ataka mtasema amen, ilibeba yangu Amen Amwezi yenda pali kama kila mara tu ni kukula kula. Ambia jirani yako hapo unasemanga amen tafadhali. Mwambie usiposema amen wewe ni suspect wa makurios na makurias. Geukia huyo mwingine mwambie hapo unasemanga amen ama wewe ni suspect wa makurios na makurias. 7 days bet I carried my people. At the end of the meetings like this because I coordinated everything. Tukikuwa sasa ndo tuna break the last day as we are eating beans like this. I'm saying this story is to provoke something in you. As we were taking beans like this, the Holy Ghost hit me. I turned to the pastor's wife. I said, God is speaking some things. The woman fell down under the power. That lady gave a testimony to my pastor for over two weeks. That fire never left her. I have prayed, I am praying, and I will still pray. Amen. What you will receive will be so strong in your spirit Amen. that you will never recover from it. I don't care how many years you are. Whether you are 15 or 58, I am believing God that there will be an impartation that will come on you that you will never recover from. Please, I want you to pull this thing. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? I want to believe God that what you will take will be so strong on you. An encounter that will stay permanent in your life. Please, let me hear an amen right here. Because when you have an encounter, certain things fall off. When you have an encounter, certain things enter. I used to struggle in prayer until I had a man of God called Rod Pasley who stood up and said, it is an error for a pastor to preach for 10 hours and pray and pray for one hour. He said it should be the opposite. You pray for 10 hours and preach for one hour. I remember when I watched that man of God, something came from the television, entered me, and my prayer life changed right there. I came out of 10, 30 minutes prayer, two hours, I broke the lead. I want to see a generation that will rise. Maybe I'm not preaching to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, but there's somebody here who said, Lord, change my level. Take me to another dimension. I came for you. I came to tell you God can work with you but you must be willing to work together with him and so I stretch my hands towards you everything that works against others will no longer work against you I break every heaviness of your life when you shout amen it goes I said when you shout amen it goes I change weakness to strength I command you to receive strength I said I command you to receive strength I said I command you to receive strength strength to pray strength to tarry strength on faith strength to live a holy life strength to please god strength to affect your generation i stretch my hands towards you your faith level goes higher 
your generation shall rejoice because of you i said your generation shall rejoice because of you you will affect everyone around you what you will carry from here will affect everyone around you i know i'm not preaching to everyone but i come against every warring devil that hinders you from rising to another level i come against every spell of the enemy working against you i come against confusion i come against every trap of the enemy every spell of witchcraft that may hinder your spirituality i rise against it i come against carnality in the name of jesus thoughts that have lifted themselves against the knowledge of god i bring them down to the obedience of the word i infuse in you the mind of christ i infuse in you the nature of god i command another energy shandela karope loprenda la karia le karia mapro shide katila makata la karia repoto likatalia receive now wherever you are i feel the holy ghost on people here they are people receive the power receive the power now likanda la karometa rope pe 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 randele karia mapro lika katita tia rope pe pe tia lika tia we have opened the heavens now pelega taliga polika randila rope lete te 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 rome tatia come on just open your mouth and pray something is open here if you're seated down you can stand up god is visiting people now nineda kata you will hunger for god lipote nita nama re dadi ro de de re dada lika nama come on don't look at me open your mouth and raise a prayer there is a move of God here. Shanina makanda na bakaria. Romende lebe kandi lebe ko. I know some of you may be tired, but let me tell you as you begin to pray, something else is coming to you. A new wind, a new wind, a new wind. My God, I feel the power of God here. May you receive it whoever you are. Receive the power. Yes, there it is. Receive the power. Receive the power. Receive the power. God is here. Wherever you are at the back in the middle, power is is here power is here power is here rope katandila re talika take it wherever you are take it take your deliverance every strange addiction take it every bondage in your life be broken now re de 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 manda la boteka re katia lo pre katalaba la kadia da doshe rande te 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 rope pe te kata re katalama ramando lo coria re kanda la basha kia ro kanda la baka rianta la ba receive the power here come on open your mouth and raise a prayer open your mouth and raise a prayer open your mouth god is already working angels are busy moving in people's lives lift up your hands if you're seated down and you can stand up stand up unless you are kneeling down it is well but god is doing there's a fire made available here there is a fire made available here everyone is different i didn't just come to teach you i came to release an oil over your head so open your mouth right now power is here I can't hear you now church I cannot hear you somebody open don't pray quietly come on release yourself release yourself release yourself release yourself release yourself yes 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 god is sorting out people here god is sorting out people here there are some of you you're receiving another impartation for prayer wherever you are take it leave your neighbor you came alone come out because sour watch on a way way sort out yourself god is releasing a help to somebody you will live here with a 24 hours
of miracles a breakthrough is coming on you a miracle is coming on you help is coming on you right now help is coming on you right now in the name of the lord jesus we are in the house of god the house of bread the place of encounters the place of change god is strengthening somebody's prayer life god is renewing you god is revitalizing somebody god is reigniting god is lifting come on come on come on i want you to take it to the next level 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 take it Whatever needs to be broken, I break it. I break debts. I break every struggle. I command it to leave you. I command it to leave you. Every demonic attack to lose you. Lose you. Lose you. Repatanine mekatia. Repotele katalika tapa. Ribanda la karia. Ligaria maposha. Yeganda la ka. Ropepepe. La katile besha. Ropetali. 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 There's a revival. Somebody's reviving. Somebody's reviving. Come on, lift up your hands wherever you are. There's a revival. Some of you feel like something is entering you. It's a flame of the Holy Ghost. And something is leaving you. It's a burden that the enemy put on you. Come on, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Whatever you want, receive it. Whatever need you have, receive it. Whatever impartation you desire, receive it. Receive it. We are in an anointing service. Receive it hey. Hey. Hakuna Jambo Usilo Weza Wewe ni Oh, hakuna jambo. Please give me the microphone. Come on, mashallah bakuna. Hakuna jambo usilo. Give it more life now. Take it now. Take it higher. Give it 
kushinda ye yeah. unaweza tan unaweza take it fast unaweza hit it hard unaweza take it again unaweza Now take it higher. Who now is a come on, take it higher. Who now is a come on. Who now is a yes. Who now is a good. By yourself that you have desired to receive strength to do take that power lift up your hands right now receive the energy take it wherever you are take it wherever you are take it wherever you are strength to tarry strength to tarry Lift your hands, I command correction on every spiritual battle. Whatever war it has been, by this prayer I declare the hand of the enemy is removed from your destiny. Oh, I said I declare the hand of the enemy is removed from your destiny. I said again, I declare the hand of the enemy is removed from your destiny. I declare the hand of the enemy is removed from your destiny. So I bind every defiling dream, every attack in dreams of regression, every demonic attack to defile you. I bind it in the name of Jesus. 
I bind every heaviness. I bind every struggle. I bind depression. I bind discouragement. I bind despair. I bind every hex he, he, or challenge the enemy can raise. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Right now receive an atmosphere that takes you to another level. Depending on how big your cup is, how expectant you are, receive it right now. Some of you are receiving an energy that you have never had. Take it. Take it. Take it. There it is. There it is. Take it. Take it. Take it now. Take it now. I don't need to lay hands on your angels are already doing business here. I said how big your cup is determines how much you will receive. Take it in the name of Jesus. As we climb at this conference, you're taking it. Take your help. You're coming out of here with the help. You're coming out of here with the help. That battle ceases from today. Between now and tomorrow, you will find a solution. A breakthrough opens now. Finances respond to you now. Every struggle you have had financially is broken right now. Broken right now. Help is coming to somebody. 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 You will feel like something lifted from you and something new entered you. The Lord will show you a sign of a help in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I come against delay. Every demonic spell that causes delay and every spell that causes losses. You keep on losing virtues relationships finances opportunities even people in your family as i stretch my hands towards you i break the power now in the name of jesus every delay loses you now every manner of loss departs from you now and I stretch my hands to command divine acceleration. Receive an anointing of speech. Some of you will feel light in your legs. It's acceleration coming on here. Receive it now. Receive it now. God is beginning to give you speed. Some of you will feel like something is coming on your shoulder. God is replacing. God is restoring. God is restoring. Everything you ever lost. A restoration is coming. God is restoring. God is restoring. Wherever you are, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it. Be healed in your body. I command your blood to be healed. I command your chest to be healed. I command your eyes to be healed. I command your stomach to be healed. I command the ulcer to disappear, the asthma to disappear, the muscles to be healed. I command every condition in your system to be healed. I declare every pain in your body dissipates. Out of your body, 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 in the name of Jesus. Right now receive your healing. Somebody here with a migraine headache that has been persistent, it has lifted. Receive your healing now. Somebody here with pain in the eyes, particularly in the morning, God has healed. I see somebody with muscle problems on your nerves also. There is correction coming now. Take your healing now. I said receive it in the name of Jesus. I see a skin disease under somebody's armpits and spreading on your body. God is correcting the condition. The skin disease has been persistent, but I command it to dry now. 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 I command that hand that has had a problem to be healed. I command that stomach to be healed. Ulcers are dry. Check yourself wherever you are. Ulcers dry. Ulcers dry ulcers dry
Hakuna Without the music and anything, just lift your hands. I want to see something happen here right now. Just watch what will happen. Lift up your hands, close your eyes, be expectant. A wind will blow on people here like never before. One, it's blowing now. Take it wherever you are. Two, it's blowing now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There it is, there it is. There it is. There it is. Three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. There it is. Take it in the name of Jesus. Woo, <laughs> Jehovah, da Gaza, Leka, Roba, Salah. Take it. It's like a fresh fire. Some of you, it's like laughter. Take it in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, come on, open yourself. There it goes, there it goes. Don't mind who is behind you. You receive it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. <sighs> Take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me get an usher here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me get an usher, please. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God is increasing it in your life. Levels upon levels. Levels upon levels. Levels upon levels. In the Kaskia, Romo Seleka, Tendelekaria, Moskia, Ali Asandelebeko, Rikalika. You've been having dreams, you cannot interpret them. Leave the dreams that are even struggling dreams. You have dreams you can't interpret. Please run in front. God wants to impart in you the gift of the interpretation. You have dreams, you only see it come to pass. Come in front right now. There's an impartation of the prophetic on you. Quickly come in front. Quickly come in front. Quickly come in front. Quickly come in front. Come in front. Dreams, but you keep on forgetting. But you, somewhat you know but the interpretation is very unclear now God is about to open you to clarity stretch them out to the other side in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ are you people tired are you tired God is doing something here in the precious name of Jesus join your hands together join your hands together as you lift them up high thank you Jesus the Lord will teach you the Lord will teach you he will teach you how to profit. He will guide you into places that the results you will command will be supernatural. People will be amazed by the things that you will do. And it's because God is saying, I'm going to be sitting you down in my class. He says, as I speak to you, write. As I speak to you, write. I will show you things to come even 10 years from now. To details, says the Spirit of God, will you have them? In the precious name of Jesus. Masoko seka tilama sondele katia sotetia trandoske kati toli tali tala iponte tete tata tote pato teka prasonde il as il as il as ibo ol is il ant il as ol ik at is it ol ia em il ant il as ol il a ali a asolo ibalaka asonte. Leave it with me, says the Holy Spirit. I sort out issues when I am left to sort them out. Don't carry it again. It's no longer your burden. It's now mine, says the Holy Spirit. You will see me sort out many things that you have labored for. The Lord says, beginning the month of May, you are now starting to walk into your season of harvest. Harvest of prayers. Harvest of labors. Harvest of seeds you have sown. Tears you have cried. Now your season has come. In the name of Jesus. So begin to rejoice. Because I'm wiping your tears. Hakuna jambo. I put my hands on you. For headship is on you. God is putting headship on you. 
You will break through in places you never thought you could break through. You will break through in places you never thought you can break through. You will break through in places you never thought you will break through. Beyond the borders of Wasingishu, beyond the borders of Kenya, God is bringing you to dimensions of a headship anointing. Headship anointing. Headship anointing. They will see you, they will acknowledge you. They will see you, they will say, you are the one we have been looking for and we want to work with. For I have laid my hands upon you and I will use you for greater works. Lift up your hands, join them together. Are you ready? Every dream that you've ever had from henceforth, the grace to find clarity comes upon you. Any spell of confusion will no longer work against you. Any spell of forgetfulness will no longer work against you. But this prayer, I make decrees now, will have clarity and remembrance. Join your hands. Clarity and remembrance. Clarity and remembrance. I gave Esther favor. I have put it on you. Nations will call for you. The intelligence I have put in you will be paid for. You will teach kings and advise princes. From today, you will never forget the dreams you dream. The Lord will cause you to be a prophet in your times. There will be precision. In fact, some of you here, you had a dream this morning. God is now bringing it to clarity. Any backward dream in your life no longer holds water. It is removed with permanence. So may you now receive an impartation as you join hands, lift them together. Receive an impartation right now. You're behind your schedule, my daughter. You should be way ahead. Delay had come in to intrude that which God had gifted you to walk in. You look like you're among them, but you should not be there. You should be ahead of them. I'm going to lay hands on you. You will now go before them. For the Lord is now restarting your program from the crowd to the front. Go back to your prophetic schedule. The same is on you, my daughter. The same is on you. No, 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 no. It will no longer hold you. It will no longer hold you. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Put your hand on her belly, please. Put your hands on her belly. Both of them. Put both hands. Uh, come, come behind her. Just come behind her. Put both hands. Uh -huh. This girl is about to give birth to things that she has carried for periods of time. In the name of the Lord Jesus, power all over you that will literally take everything to the next level. No more delay. No, not again. Not again. Just pray for her in the Holy Ghost. Pray for her in the Holy Ghost. It's an impartation of a shift. Kekata, tikata, tikato, tikata, tititi, tokoto, tikatia. Prosonde porokoskia tite poso tita tita polika sonde tolika. In the name of Jesus. In the young, young man, arise. Young man, arise. 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 From today, I open your heavens to give you strength to begin to move into what God appointed for you. In the name of of the Lord Jesus. Pastor Sungu, now step on the feet of this lady. Remove your shoes and step on her feet. And lady, if you have shoes, remove them quickly. There's impartation coming on you. Join your hands. Yes, let's, let's agree. I know I'm taking time. See, leo ni anointing service. Sikesho ni holiday. Inuwe ni mikono. Sinimalizi ya hapa lafu dotu wanze kwa anoint kila moja. Inuwe ni na ujasiri tafadhali. One, two, three. Receive the impartation. Just take it wherever you are. Take it now, take it now, take it now, take it now from the back to the front. Just let it move, let it move now, let it move, let it move in Jesus' precious and holy name. It is done. Can we give the Lord a clap offering right here? We can do better. Let's give the Lord a better clap offering. Quickly, do we have anointing oil? Demonic dreams that keep on repeating themselves, lift your hands and just put one hand on your head. Paliuko, tafadhali. Eka mkono moja kwa kichwa ingine winue. Kutoka leo ni naisambaratisha haita wairegea. 
ni kwa sababu ndani yako kuna uwepo wa prophecy so from today haitawairegea na na, na ku encourage please anza kuchunga macho yako usikaone kila kitu na usikaingiana na kila kitu so that dreams zako pia zikakuwa affected but pia kutoka leo pali popoto ulingangana hautangangana tena kama kuna spiritual husband ama wife ninamfungia mlango sasa hatawairegea tena katika jina la Yesu Kristo and i declare your dreams will be more clear in Jesus name if you receive it give the lord a clap of praise right here in the name of Jesus let me ask the pastors to come and help me we are going to pray for you very quickly i think we will start with the people that are already here uh, we are pastors so we will quickly pray for you everyone move in front let's pray for you where prophecy will be we will prophesy for you, to you apart from maybe the ones that are serving uh, maybe on the camera uh, and the others behind there we will pray for you after we finish very quickly uh, just come do we only have one ball i said ngekuwa na mingi ndo to distribute ndo tufanye fanya haraka katika jina la Yesu Kristo let me pray for you i have greeted you there will be people that god is bringing to greet you they will greet you with the letters of taking you to the next level letters that will be an acknowledgement of labors and tears and investments the lord is saying that i have accepted your labors and now your season has altered says the holy spirit in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you've even been feeling some weight on you in your back even when you pray and some degree of break the struggle when you want to break through. What is saying those are indications of labor pain. You have been in that season. God is saying now time to give others come. So as I hold hands I also partner with you to agree you will release without struggle. Release without struggle. The flow will be with ease in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Do we have more balls? Okay, but we should have many. Lift your hands. Sit na kuombea. Na una receive, tuna unanza kuomba. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Pastor Sungu, come, come, come. Let's pray. Pastors wale wako hapa, tuwaombe katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Macho yako mungu wanafungua. Utaona, utaona. Umekuwa kiona, lakini sasa mungu wanaregesha ability yako ya kuona. That's how God will be speaking to you. He will be showing you things accurately, accurately. Accurately, accurately, accurately. Now, kiona andika chini. Now, fuate muelekeo ile mungu anakueleza. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. It is well. It is well. Be at peace. Be at peace. Be at peace. Where is, where is Pastor Dori, da, Damaris again? Please, where is she? Where is she? I still want to pray for you. Lift your hands. God is not yet done. In the name of Jesus, it's not yet done. I release more. More! For the level that God is taking you to. More! In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. Write down what he tells you and watch it come to pass. Take it, lift your hands. What do you do? God is breaking financial struggles. Izi mikono sasa hivizi tafunguliwa kwa biashara na pesa. Ile haujawai jua kwa maisha yako. Kwa sababu mungu anasema meka utajiri kwa maisha yako. Nema ya utajiri iko na mikono hii itagusa hela in the name of Jesus it is well with you as we are going to just receive it and pray the bleeding stops that bleeding stops every financial bleeding stops it stops now financial retainment begins financial attraction begins God is saying be bold and rise to where he's calling you. Stop fearing. Come to this place that he's calling you to. Yes, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. No, you, you haven't yet taken it. Take, 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 take. In the name of Jesus. There is a tremendous joy. Books are in your hands. Do you ever write? 
Do you ever write? Did you ever think of writing? There are books in your hands. Receive Yes. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and just go ahead and thank God. God is already doing it. Just open your mouth and appreciate the Lord. God has already done it. Just appreciate him. Appreciate him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Appreciate him. Give the Lord glory. Give the Lord honor. His presence is here. Indeed, God is amongst his people. Indeed, God is amongst his people. Somebody open your mouth. 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 Shide Sunde Kari. Come on. I hope you're not weary. Clap your hands as you prophesy. 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 Libro Sunde Lebecaria. Now I want you to lift up your hands. Shout to God. God, with a voice of triumph for the things he has done for the things he's doing and for the things he shall do somebody open your mouth give the Lord a shout come on you can do better give the Lord a shout come on give him a shout give him a shout give him a shout give him a shout don't hold back open your mouth rejoice 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 Rejoice! Come on, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Open your mouth and give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear a shout of hallelujah. There's a singer that sang this way, he said, hallelujah. Hey. Can you just try that? Hallelujah. Oh. You can try that. Hallelujah, hey, just simple. I hear the sound of victory. We say, Hallelujah, hey. We say it again, Hallelujah, oh. Come on, Hallelujah, hey. Come on, one more time. I hear the sound of victory. Hallelujah. Go ahead and turn it in this house. Say, Hallelujah. We declare, say, hallelujah, yeah. I hear the sound, I hear the sound of victory. Hallelujah, yeah. We declare, we say, hallelujah. I declare, we say, let the sound of rejoicing this house. One more time, hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead and say hallelujah. Yeah. I hear the sound of victory. We say, I hear the sound of victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Now we change it. We say, let the sound, let the sound of rejoicing fill this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap your hands, say Hallelujah. I hear the sound, I hear the sound of victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let the sound, let the sound of rejoicing feel. Now let's Shout and rejoice. Come on and rejoice. Fill the house with a praise. Come on, don't hold back. Shout. 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 
shout shout let your healing come as you're shouting let your breakthrough come as you're shouting let your miracle come as you're shouting let your doors open as you shout let your favor come as you shout 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 yes 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 hey wow miracles are in this house doors have opened in this house favor has landed in this house heavens are open in this house speed is in this house acceleration is in this house joy is in this house peace is in this house god is helping in this house if you believe it, shout aloud yes Wow. Well, let's stop there. Wow, I feel it. Nataka kangoma. Simu nipeleka praise moja. Mwashe ni kitu. Simon kuja utusaidie. Peleka kitu. Pakua ikiwa moto. Nasikia tu kangoma kana kuja na shindwa inakuja. Munu 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 kitu tu. Leteni kitu. Leteni kitu. the Lord one more time. Amen and amen. Well, we thank God for, wow, 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 glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hey! 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 Jesus! Jesus! 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, very quickly, because I also needed to sit down to submit the microphone. Let me begin by announcing I, I do write, but I did one mistake when I came this time. Uh, I wasn't able to come with most of my, okay, basically my books, because most of them are out of print. Uh, but I had a friend of mine who is a guest minister that came in today, and he's also an author, so I insisted, I told him, please, if you don't mind, let me take some of your books and present it to people. And then there's also one book, uh, if you'll allow me, that uh, I have done. I do devotionals, daily devotionals, the one you see on the screen. I do it on soft copy. People receive it on WhatsApp. I have over, um, let me say, 2,000 to 10,000 subscribers. Africa, Europe, America, Australia, it goes all that way. So people keep on receiving it, pastors, men of God, uh, people at all levels. Now, uh, last year, the Lord commanded me to put it in, uh, in what we call writing, so I did it in that. I forgot to come with a hard copy, so what I did, I requested Alan, if possible, if we would post it there. This is the reason. The reason is because I wanted to ask you, if in case you are interested, are you following me? Now, do you understand what a devotional is for? Okay? Soft copy is different. The ones that received it on soft copy, it's actually free. I just put you on what we call a broadcast on WhatsApp, and then in a tumwangwa kati. Like any hard copy is more advantageous because you can use it when you don't have data in your family, for your family altar, and then for your Bible study. So it's cover to cover the whole year, 2023. I started the first one, 2022, then had this one, 2023 uh, this year. If you are interested, there's a full package. It's the devotional, a notebook, and a pen. All of them come together for only 1,500 Kenyan shillings. So if you're interested, I, I don't know how they will work it out. Maybe you will see Alan. They will write your name. You can do the payments, and you will get the materials this week. The devotional, the, uh, what do you call this, the notebook, and the pen. I have other books, but I want to insist on this one. Are you hearing me? The main reason is because I would want to see you have a structured Bible study one of the areas that God has helped us and which I also see in this ministry is in the area of the word. And uh, I would want to see that my generation also builds on the same and they can be helped. So please, if you're interested, see Alan, they can write down your name, you can do the payments and then we will give you the books this week. So my friend is called Apostle Joshua Felix. He's actually residing in Kitale, very powerful man of God. He has a book called If Evil Ahab Can Fast, What About You? Did you know Ahab fasted? Are you aware? I know you don't know, so you will read it and then you will know. Praise the Lord. There's another one called Wisdom for Prophets, Prophetic People, and Those Who Love Them. It will give you more understanding about prophecy, prophets, the calling, the gift of the prophet. You could also go ahead and take advantage of it. Uh, there's one other one, but it's only one copy. These ones are only two. These ones are two, two. Uh, each one of them, by the way, goes for 500, all of the books. Uh, these ones are also two, so just make an effort, get them. If you need more, I can organize. It's sometimes come out, Jabeba Zako, Sinyafadali, Ubebe Zamoenzako. I know, by the man you must marry. I think uh, women, this one you don't fast. Kwanza wewe, ununuwe yaraka sana. Bwone so asifi. Ruth, kuja ununuwe, itu ununuwe. Hii ni mekuimpozi ya kati. Simu nampigia makofi kwa sababu pasta memfosia. Amen. Hii ni yako, ala nakupatie miyatano, ni memwekea. Kwa sababu watapata mwana ume mzuri hii mwaka. Hii mwaka, mungu wa mejibu maumbi yake katika jina la Yesu Christo. So, please take advantage. Those, that's the devotional on the inside. You can also go ahead and have a look at it. And these are the other ones. Each one of them 500. Since there are a few copies, uh, no problem. You can still go ahead and place an order in order to get more. The devotional is also the same. I want to register my thanks specifically to mom, uh, who was the person that actually called me from the beginning invited me on the behalf of the youths, coordinated the youths. Uh, the reason I say this is because it shows belief in me. Thank you for believing in me and entrusting me, mom, with the youths and with the people of God. I love you so much. I know you know that. If there's anything, I remember there was something I went through some years ago, about two years ago, and I was sharing it with Bishop. Uh, I have a culture, most of the times, I tell, when I tell people, always be accountable to people, it's very important. And then have counsel around you and support systems, it's essential. I mean, this discussion of depression and everything, let, let me tell you, we all have been through certain roads. If it was to give up and die, most of us would have done so. But if we haven't run mad, 
and God has kept us. God will keep you. Praise the name of the Lord. So I remember I was actually sharing it to a bishop. That was back in 2021 when I was actually telling him. And then later on we met with mom and I asked her, because I always believe in her prayers. We mama kinyombe anga, sita kudanganya na kuanga na breakthrough. Iyo ni najua. Mami yoneza kusema for free. When I talked to her, we were talking kwa hoteli hapa. Ilikuwa kwa hoteli hapa nini? I think ilichukua tu wiki ngapi. Ilikuwa wiki moja ama mbili na yo breakthrough kakuja. Yes. Wiki moja ama mbili. So mom, I want to again register my thanks. Thank you so much. And the Lord bless you. Please help me to appreciate mom. She's a very wonderful mother. To Bishop, the apostle of this house, even in his absentia. Bishop, I know you will be watching this. I love you too. Thank you for entrusting me with the people of God. Please help me to celebrate the father of this house. To the youth leadership, Alan, thank you for taking care of me. Mimi sipendi makurios na makuria sana. I fast at least three times every week. So he week ilipita nilifanya raka raka. So Friday afternoon nikasema ni revenge kwa sababu nilikuwa na marathon. Na ndugu huyu Uluya ilimfuata na akatupeleka pali Waluya wanakulanga. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Muhubiri wanasemanga ukitaka kupatia muhubiri chakula ziko tatu kwa Biblia. Ya kwanza ni nyama choma Deuteronomy chapter 18. Ya pili ni samaki hata Yesu wakati alipofufuka pia alikula na kama alikula kama amefuka na baadaye akaenda mbinguni na maisha mbinguni kuna choo. Ya tatu, Mwana Yesu asifiwe. <laughs> ya tatu ni kuku kwa sababu hiyo ndio ili reveal Petero na akasema amedanganya. Si kweli? So kuku pia ni lazima tukule. So chakula tatu ya wahubiri nyama choma, samaki na kuku. So alinishughulikia na Deuteronomy chapter number 18. Mpigieni makofi amefanya kazi mzuri. Kwa viongozi wote wengine, tafadhali, I also register thanks to all the youth team. Thank you so much to the pastors, Pastor Damaris, Pastor Esther, uh, eh? sorry, Mrs. Bet. I bet ni namjua, nataka jina yake. Penina, yeni memjua kwa mdamrefu. It's just the name. Thank you so much. And all the rest of the leaders, God bless you. I love you all so much. Praise team, thank you so much. Douglas, thank you for being a blessing. I love you all. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh. Okay. Kweli kumalizanga raka si mzuri. Wamesema online team pia tu acknowledge. Si tuwapigie makofi tafadhali wote wale wame participate. Tafadhali let's do better and appreciate them. Thank you so much. Uh, I was reminded we gave out envelopes for people that were doing sacrifices. Do you have them? Those that actually received it. If you do, please quickly come in front. Quickly come in front if you have them with you. Uh, post out the details for any person that also feels a leading to also uh, bring out a sacrifice. Oh, you already did yours here. That's wonderful. Please quickly come. Come with your envelope. Quickly come with your envelope. If you feel you also want to give a seed of significance as we finish the conference, lift up your hand. Let them bring you the envelope quickly. Any person that feels that. Me had already concluded, so please don't waste time with me. Come in front, please. They will give you an envelope. Any other person who feels you want to give a seed of significance, just come in front. They will give you the envelope. Quickly come in front. Quickly come in front. Come receive the envelope. Time is gone, so to fanya hivi ya raka. To fanya hivi ya raka. Kabla ya receive sadaka zote zingine. Tafadhali kujeni ya raka. Kuna watu mnakau kwenyuma na onahisi ndani yako wito ya kukuja kufanya hivi. Kimbia mbele haraka haraka. Alright, quickly just go ahead and prepare the offerings. Get your normal offerings if you can. Get them. Get your normal offerings. If you're tithing, the details are also readily available. Quickly go ahead and do so. Mtu wakika kama anaenda kutoa sadaka inamaanisha ni cheka naandika apart from wachungaji wachungaji hao mtawaacha lakini wengine kama wamekaa ni cheka najua mnaandika Bwana Yesu asifiwe So tafadhali chukua sadaka yako hata kama ni kwa simu unatoa nasemanga praise team watu wangi sadaka lakini kwa hii kanisa unatoanga najua pia hao wanayo Bwana Yesu asifiwe eh, Si ni kweli so hata masimu eh, hey, praise the Lord najua mtatoa yenu pia Sit we inwe tafadhali and then we pray together Those of you that are watching you could also participate the details are actually flowing on the screen, so you could also be a part of it. So please feel free. There's a pay bill readily available and an account number. And if in case you're out of the nation, I think there should be details also readily available. So please.
participate also. Shall we lift up our offerings? Even if you're giving via the phone and even if you don't have an offering, just lift up your hands. May the Lord bless that seed. I said, may the Lord bless that seed. It finds acceptance before him today and it will multiply in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please come and drop it on the altar in the precious name of Jesus. Quickly just drop it on the altar. Or are we dropping it inside here? Yeah, just do so. God bless you. Thank you so much. Wale wanakuja kutuwa sadaka wanatolea wapi? Sadaka za kawaida. Alright, tafadhali kujeni. There is no other sequence. Just quickly come. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you man of God. And uh, I'll give our guest singer also some time to give us his parting shots. Karibu. Thank you, thank you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Um, mom, um, you allow me to call you mom because that's, why, that's how my mother taught me. I'm deeply humbled just to be here. Nimekuwa nikisikia tu kwa mikutano tu kule nje nikitembea Eldoret Eldoret so forth so forth then God brings me here. Um, and one thing yenye nilileta hapa was to come and drink from your well. Nashukuru to the praise team you will sing in heaven. Bwana Yesu asifiwe and also for the holy spirit that was with us. Ninaomba ya kwamba Mungu azidi kutubariki. Pastor Pancras na wote ambao huduma yangu iliwaguza Mungu awabariki Bwana Yesu asifiwe Niko na YouTube channel inaitwa Douglas Iluzu Niko na Facebook page inaitwa Douglas Iluzu Music In fact mom picha zote zenye zinachukuliwa hapa mimi sina but people are sending it to me Man of God, we are, we are blah, blah, blah. Let me not go there. But this shows that the excellence in this church is a voice out there. And to everybody who is here, is my prayer that you should not live empty. So, ma'am, najua kuna wakati pia tutakutana. I didn't have time ya kuongea na wewe in person. But I know in the spirit we are together. God will make a way tutakutana tena siku nyingine. To daddy, pia nakupenda sana. Uh, to all the pastors, when you are in Tumwa, kasema salimia mom na daddy, nimefikisha salam. So mbarikiwe, Alan. Thank you for the hospitality, Ken. Ako uh, wapi. <laughs> na, na, na youth wote, ambao, wa, wa, wamekua kitu shugulikia. Si mungu wa wabariki. Si mungu wa wabariki. Si mungu wa wabariki. Tomorrow it will be you. Tomorrow it will be you. Ni wewe ndo utakuwa celebrated. Tupigie Yesu makofi mbarikiwe. Asante sana Douglas and uh, Hisa Ambera. Mpeleke kwa ofisi. Ken uko wapi? Oh. So she's waiting for you here as we do some in-house